Hi, this is CBRadioMagazine.com, and today we're going to look at the Titan Road Pro 2 RPSY485. This is a 10 meter export radio. Uh, this radio also has a couple of cousins out there that look very similar. This particular radio is an AM, FM, single sideband radio. It has a large frequency uh, coverage. It is a 10 meter radio that can be expanded for 11 meter use. Uh, we'll go through a lot of the features, some cool stuff on this radio. A uh, little bit different than like the Magnum 257. Uh, this radio is only a single final radio, not dual finals like the Magnum. And some of the features are a little bit different, so let's go through those. On the left hand side, starting at the top here, this is the volume on off control. So you turn it to the right to turn on the radio and then adjust your volume control. Just below that on the left hand side here, uh, is the RF gain and mic gain control. This is on a dual pot control, so the outer knob is the RF gain, the inner knob is the mic gain control. Let's jump over to the top here. This is your squelch control. Uh, this is also a PA function. This radio does have a PA built in. This is your channel selector. Turning that will adjust your frequency that you're currently on. And just to the left of that is your clarifier control. This radio has an unlocked clarifier, or it actually tracks on transmit and receive. So uh, when you're adjusting it, it will adjust both at the same time for frequency. Um, this is also your function button, and I'll show you that uh, in just a second. Um, this radio has your six button pad here, and then it has your display. Your display can actually be shown in either frequency, um, or it also can be shown in a channel. Um, so as you scroll through the channels, it'll show the channel display like on a standard CB. Um, you have a designation here, which will show your mode. You can see currently it's in AM mode. It can go into upper sideband, lower sideband, or FM mode. Over here, you're going to see that it's showing uh, the band or bank of channels that it's currently on. We can adjust that by hitting this call button here. And I'll go through the buttons now. I think. The first button we have um, is a step button and also it's a noise blank button. Each button in most cases will have two functions and that is where this function knob will come into play. Just as uh, a standard feature without doing anything else, when you press the step button you can see the number here starts flashing and now we can adjust our channel display and can fine tune and set it up for exact frequency. So if we wanted to run on the zeros we could turn that using the step function and we press it again when we're done. Now when we change the channels, we're going to be running on the zeros rather than the fives. The other feature on that is the noise blank. To make the noise blank work, you would press the function button once and then press the noise blank. And you'll see the noise blank now is showing up above. The second feature here on the pad is the call feature and I showed you that before and that actually changed the banks of frequencies. So you can see we've gone from 25 26, 27, 28, and up to 29 megahertz. The third button here is the scan feature. Pressing it once will begin the radio scanning. Of course it only scans when the squelch is up and depending on the squelch level when it comes across the signal it'll disable it and stop. This button also has a shift function on it. Um, in the mode that it's currently in for the extended coverage that mode is just disabled on this radio. Uh, if you had this radio set up for 10 meter, like it originally was intended, it would be working. Number four button here um, is a last channel recall. Pressing this will take you back to the last channel that you spent some time on. And it also has a repeater function on it, which is also disabled in the current mode, uh, which could be used in the 10 meter mode. Button number five is your mode changing. Pressing this button will rotate through the modes. You can see it's rotating from AM, lower sideband, FM, AM, upper sideband, so you can go through all the different modes this way. Um, the second function on that button is a low, let me see up here it does need low, that is just a low tone, so it'll get rid of some of the hiss and adjust the tone. The last function we'll show is the memory button. With the memory button you can save a frequency along with the mode of operation in one of the other five buttons there. And the way you would do this uh, to access them once they're saved is you press the memory button once and then press the button where the frequency is stored. Here we've gone to 27.025 lower sideband, that's on the number one. Let's say I saved a different frequency on the number two, I want to go there. I press memory, number two, and there we go, it jumps. Um, 
If you want to save a new frequency, so let's say we'll put it on 27.005 AM, and I want to save that to say number four here, I will press the function button, the memory button, and the number four. Now it's been saved, so if you watch, I can press the memory button, the number two, it goes to 385. If I press the memory button and go to four, it's now got a 27.005. So you can save your frequencies in the buttons. That's a very neat feature. If you have one of these radios and you disconnect the power, it will revert back to uh, the 10 meter mode uh, that it can be in. And what you'll need to do uh, is pop it back into 11 meter mode if you're going to be using it for that. And what you do to do that is you press the function key and then you hold down the call button for three seconds. And that will jump it into the 11 meter mode. Um, often when you turn it on after it's been sitting around for a while without power, it'll designate directly to up in the 29 megahertz range. So you'll have to hold down the function button and then let go and press the call button, hold it in for three seconds and it'll jump over to 11 meters. The Titan Road Pro does utilize the six pin microphone connector. Um, if you look over here on the left hand side, uh, the microphone on this radio is a power microphone when it's attached. The center pin on this microphone connection uh, is a hot or powered uh, voltage pin, um, meaning that the power is applied from the radio into the microphone, making it into a power microphone. It has very good, strong microphone gain. Um, this is very similar to the way the Magnum 257 works. But on the Magnum 257, the microphone that comes with it has an adjustment for microphone gain inside the microphone. The Titan Rode Pro microphone does not have that. Um, so any microphone gain adjustments would be inside with the modulation circuit or using just the microphone gain on the front of the radio. Uh, the radio overall had very good receive. Actually has one of the best receivers I've heard in a long time. Um, I would put it up there with the Magnum 257 and even up with the uh, HR 2510s and 2600s uh, in the President line. Uh, very good receiver in it, uh, very good response on sideband especially. The radio actually had good audio, uh, I had very good reports with it, and I also made a lot of contacts on uh, this radio and DX, so uh, very impressed with it. Very small radio as you can tell. Um, it is not very wide across, it has a very small compact profile. Um, to give me an idea, this is a roll of electrical tape, so you can tell it's a very small radio. For information and a full written review, visit cbradiomagazine.com.